Good morning, you guys, it's Karen, and um, I thought I would come and give you an update on how the gabapentin is going, um, migraine-wise. I've been trying to wait until things settle down, but there's actually quite a few things to tell you, so I thought I would come and do it now, and somebody did ask about it as well. Um, so thank you for that, thank you for being interested. Um, I would say it's up and down at the moment. It's It's really, really, really up and down. It's up and down with how how and when it works, if it works, and the side effects. So it's it's a real mixed bag at the moment. Um, I would I was looking two days ago. I was having a look at my migraine sheet that I record everything on, um, and I have also got a book that I write down all the side effects and all that kind of thing. And I realised in that book that in the last two weeks I haven't had a mild migraine day when I haven't been on tramadol because I'm still taking my tramadol on. You know every. I can take it three times a week, basically. I'm still taking it three times a week. And that counteracts the tiredness that I'm getting from the gabapentin. Um, and the other days have been, I would say, I, I suppose they've been milder than my usual migraines, but I've still been unable to function because of the tiredness. And it's so weird because, like I said, sometimes it's sometimes it completely knock, knocks me out and I'm walking around like I'm drunk, you know, I'm, I'm literally walking into doorways. Um, and other times I'm just sitting on the sofa doing things and, and trying to fight it, you know, so I've been doing things like sewing or think I know I'm unable to sit at the computer because I'm kind of, you know, out of it. Um, so the side effects are really a bit of a struggle for me at the moment. Sorry, you're wobbling there, I know. Uh, and it's funny because my mother-in-law said to me, you know, I was telling her, oh, I'm on this. I think I found something that's working for the migraines, but it, it's hard to know because it's completely knocking me out, making me tired. And she just went, oh, well, that'd be better than having migraines, you know. And I thought, yeah, I'm sure people would say that. But if I'm completely unable to function, then it, it doesn't, it is more pleasant in a way to, to feel drunk and tired than have the pain of the migraines. So I don't have the pain. Um, but I'm still unable to function a lot of the time, you know, so I need to get past that. Now, it does say in the information leaflet that the side effects should go away in two to three weeks, but I've been to see the GP um, and I've also been to, spoken to the pharmacist um, because we've, we're very lucky. So I'm just writing something down to tell you that I've just remembered. We're very lucky in our GP surgery. We have a dedicated pharmacist that you can speak to and also a physio that you can make an appointment with for many, many different things. Um, and I have been having this pain in my feet, so I have seen the physio about that. Um, and he basically said it's neuropathy, which is what the GP had thought. Um, we're not sure why. It could be, I think it's from sugars and that, you know, um, the diabetic thing is a whole other story. Um, but the... The physio I spoke to, he said he knew over the years, he said he's known thousands of people on gabapentin. Um, the fact that it's working for me, he agrees that it's probably occipital neuralgia that I've had all of these years, um, that type of migraine. Um, but he said it can take six weeks for the side effects to disappear. And so when I spoke to the pharmacist, I was asking him what he thought. And he said, yes, definitely wait six weeks like it could take six weeks to disappear. And that happened with amitriptyline when I first took it. And amitriptyline is, a, is another nerve drug like gabapentin is. So it could well be that if I wait this out, I will feel better. <laughs> um, I know that it's working for my migraines, but it is sometimes really hard to know when your head is feeling really thick, like as if you're drunk and you're really tired and there's a little bit of dizziness with it as well it's hard to tell, like, is this is this a migraine starting or is it not? They kind of overlap a little bit. The only thing I'm missing is the pain in my head, which is great. But as I've always told you guys, that wasn't the major symptom for me. Um, but the one thing happened that made me think, this is definitely working. And it was, we were watching TV and there's this new filming style. I don't know whether I've ever spoken to you about this. Like, I already find it difficult to watch things like Stripes or... Um, like big waves you know if they do scenes of a boat in the in the sea I have to look away because it just that makes me dizzy but there's this new filming thing where they're like the camera goes around say there's a group of three or four people talking the camera spins around them and I'm always like whoa why are they doing that you know and unable to look at it and we were watching something Kevin and I and that type of filming was happening and I said to him 
I'm watching this, I'm not looking away and, and it's not bothering me at all. That is outstanding. That's kind of my sign, if you like. So I do think it's working, but I'm really struggling with these side effects. Um, but, but some days are better than others. But like I said, it was two weeks since I'd had a mild day. However, the last two days, if I have again been mixed, not yesterday, but the day before, I had a day where I was really tired at about 10 o'clock and I was saying to give Ray, I'm, I'm really struggling. I don't know whether I can stay awake or not. Um, but it only lasted about half an hour and then the rest of the day was mild. So that was a really mild day, no tramadol, just down to gabapentin. Yesterday, however, the whole day I was just sat on the couch like a zombie, basically. Um, and actually in the afternoon, I think, it was a migraine actually, because I started getting head pain as well, but that's because the gabapentin runs out then. So it's really up and down, which is something the, the, the pharmacist didn't think was normal. You know, they, he said it normally is linear, that it's really, really bad and then sort of tapers off. Um, but for me, it doesn't seem to be. Some days are, are worse than others. I've also got two different views from the pharmacist and two different GPs. And then I asked another pharmacist. I asked my friend, the pharmacist. Actually, I've asked three. In total, I've got five opinions on how you should take gabapentin, how much you should take. And I don't know which advice is to take, if you like. It really, it was really, really confusing when I went to collect my next dose of gabapentin from the pharmacy because I... I put an online thing in to a particular doctor. Well, I, you don't put it to a doctor. They just allocate it to one, but he, he, he is one I know. And he had said, I'd, I'd suggested I added in 100 milligram to my evening dose. My evening dose is 600 milligram. So I take two 300 milligram capsules. He suggests, I suggested added one, adding one in because at the time I was waking up at four or five o'clock every morning. Now I get up at six, so it wasn't urgent, but I just thought if I add a little 100 milligram in, that might get me all the way through the night. And I'm waking up without a migraine often. So, you know, a bigger dose at night seems to help me in the morning. So he agreed to that. And then the other thing I'd suggested was taking a 100 milligram capsule in the day to try and catch that breakthrough part of where I was having a migraine in the afternoon. So he agreed with that, issued the prescription that went to the chemist. I then had a call from the pharmacist actually about something else on my prescription about amitriptyline and asking how much I was taking and what I wanted to take and what I wanted on my prescription. And we chatted about gabapentin. Um, and he suggested that I speak to the GP because he had a different opinion. He didn't think I should be taking a large dose at night and then a smaller dose in the morning and an even smaller dose at lunchtime. Now, I had an appointment with the GP already booked at that point. I was seeing him the following day because I've been having really bad palpitations since being on gabapentin. So obviously they need to check that out because I already have an irregular heartbeat, yada, yada. So when I went to see this new GP, who was so adorable, by the way, he was so lovely, so thorough, lovely French accent. He was just, he was really, really lovely. Uh, you know, the kind of guy you, you just think, I just want to put you in my pocket and take you away with me. And you, he's just so, so much information as well. He seemed to have so much information. Now, he, I was talking about the palpitations. That was the main reason I was going to see him. And I'm currently waiting to get another 24-hour heart machine. That was our shopping arrived, so I had to take a break. So, um, all I was saying, I was seeing the lovely French doctor. And he explained to me that the... That gabapentin is addictive, I know this. So it's one that you have to be very, very careful of reducing. So when if you, you know, go up, go up, go up, and then decide that you're not going to stay on it, you can't just stop it. You have to reduce it slowly, otherwise you get really bad withdrawal effects. And what he was saying is that it is a very short-acting drug, which I knew. It's got a half-life of five hours, I think. And it, it lasts in total about seven to eight hours, supposedly. And he said the problem with that is if you only take two doses so if you took a dose in the morning and then a dose at night you would end up and that is what has been happening with a migraine in the afternoon because the medication runs out um now remember i said that a doctor had approved and sent all the medication to the pharmacy for me to take 300 in the morning 100 at lunchtime and to go from six to 700 at night. But this doctor said 
that that wasn't a good idea. He said, because what, what might happen is I might get withdrawal effects from taking 300 milligrams in the morning and then only 100 at lunchtime and then taking that big dose at night, I then might wake up with, with withdrawal effects. Now, when we were talking about it, I did say to him, well, how can you explain then, although I know that gabapentin doesn't last that long, how do you explain that I wake up with no migraine? So I, uh, I take my last dose at eight o'clock at night and I get up at half past six, but I, it, my migraine doesn't come on until like nine, 10 o'clock at the minute. So, so it's working for me for like 12 hours. And he said, I can't explain it. I don't know why. <laughs> And actually, when I thought about it, it might be to do with the fact that I'm taking bisoprolol, which is slows down your metabolism. So maybe I'm metabolizing it slower. Anyway, I got what he was saying and it seemed to make sense. And so he said what he would recommend is he wants me to take 200 at lunchtime, 200 in the morning instead of 300. And that might also help the, the whole tiredness thing. Um, and to not take another 100 at night, just stick to the 600 and see how I get on with that. So I agreed to that and he sent another prescription to the chemist. Um, and when I was in the chemist, I asked the pharmacist, she was the one actually speaking to me because she was very confused because she had the two lots and the two different prescriptions. And so I, I discussed it with her and she said, she said, I've never, ever heard of it needing to be taken in equal divided doses. You know, she says, I've never heard of the whole um, withdrawal effects between doses. Um, she's heard of pain breakthrough between doses. And I had read about a, a research study about that, that it's actually better to take gabapentin in four doses, four equal doses for pain breakthrough, but nothing to do with withdrawal. And this pharmacist was saying, I've never heard of anybody having side effects from going from a, a big dose to a small dose during the day, during their doses, you know, it sounds like, for goodness sake, everybody's got such a different opinion. So I'm now currently supposed to be taking 200 in the morning, 200 at lunchtime, and 600 in the evening. And that's only been for three or four days because I've only just picked up, I needed the 100 milligrams in order to be able to do that, the 100 milligram capsules, and they didn't have them in and had to order them and all of this. Um, but what I decided yesterday I would do is I thought, I don't know that I even need the 200 in the morning. Let me just try 100. And weirdly, yesterday was the worst day ever. So that kind of tallies with what the my GP pharmacist told me that no, sorry, the GP told me, the French GP, that, you know, I've gone from 200 to 100 and suddenly I'm really, really tired and getting all these what could be withdrawal effects. Um, so what, what I need to do is be consistent. I, I definitely can be impatient and be like, I can't live my life like this, so tired, I need to reduce the dose, you know, and, oh no, this is not working to get me to sleep, I need to increase my dose. Like I can be too impulsive with that kind of thing and I need to be consistent. So I need to stick to taking 200 in the morning, 200 at lunchtime, when I can. I've not yet done that, I'm only taking 100. He said, once you stop feeling tired, add another 100 in and 600 at night and just stick to that. Because so I'm tempted to reduce the evening amount as well because I'm actually now sleeping more. So it might just have been that it took a while to bed in for me, you know, but I need to be consistent and just stick to that amount for at least a couple of weeks and see what goes on, you know. Um, what the GP said, he thought the reasons for me being so affected by the side effects, so tired and sort of junk feeling, etc. He said is um, because of my other medication. So I'm on amitriptyline. Um, which he doesn't want me to stop because I said to him, well, I'm happy to try and stop that because I take that to stop me getting up at night and going for a wee and with bladder pain. And at the minute, I'm not having any issues with that. So let me try not taking it. And he said, no, 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 let's just do this and see what happens. Um, like I said, I need to be consistent. Um, so that could, but that could be a reason why, like I said, it's lasting longer for me because my metabolism is slower. It could be why I'm feeling more sort of, like even now, I've got a tramadol in my system today, so it's counteracting the effects, but I can feel that sort of thick headedness, you know. Um, but that may be why, because of my bisoprolol, I'm on candesartin, which is another blood pressure medication. Bisoprolol is to reduce my heart rate um, and amitriptyline is for the bladder thing. They are all kind of depressants of the system. So it, it makes you slower, uh, you know, um, and he said it could be just the way that they interact with gabapentin. And funny enough, what the pharmacist had said when I went to collect my medication, where well, she disagreed with this equal doses. She said, I know some people that just take a huge dose at night and don't have any withdrawal effects during the day. 
um, um, she had said the reason she didn't agree with it because everybody was unique. That actually rings a bell with me because you can't just say you need to take it in equal doses because you don't know what my metabolism is and all the medications that I'm on, you know. So I agree with her, everybody's unique. Um, because when I talked about in previous videos that tramadol takes hours to kick in for me, people have said, um, somebody actually left a comment and said, tramadol kicks in in 20 minutes, that's it. If it doesn't, it's not working. And I thought that's absolute rubbish because everything takes longer to kick in for me. And I think it probably is my medication, you know. Something that I found out, um, unfortunately, is that there are no slow release tablets. There is, the one that I had thought was a slow release tablet is actually, it's a precursor to gabapentin um, called an extended release, but it's not gabapentin, it's a different, it's a different name and it's not available in the UK um, and, it, and it's not available for all of the same conditions that gabapentin is available for. So there is no slow release, basically. So that is not an option. Um, but the interesting thing to me is that, like I said, I've read all the user reviews on drugs.com. I love that website for reading what people have got to say. Um, and there are quite a few people that for migraine struggled with the side effects so ended up just taking a big dose at night and that for them stopped their migraines during the day. So that kind of, it goes against what they say about gabapentin, that it has a short acting um, timeline, you know, and that you need to take it regularly and all this. It, it goes against that, but it's obviously worked for some people. Um, so I'm keeping in mind that, you know, I'm trying to not lose hope, if you like. So I'm like, this is typical. I finally found something that's working and it's definitely working. I've had music on in the car. That's something else. We never used to be able to have music on or even the radio or anything. But we've had, it's not actually been music. We've had podcasts on in the car. Um, you know, I could see that filming on the TV. There's so many different things. Like in the morning, I'm more alert and with it, you know, it's definitely working. I thought this would be typical that something's working for me, but I just can't get over the side effects. Um, but I'm really going to try and be patient. I need to be consistent in, in my dosage. So it might take months before it levels out, you know. Um, I'm nervous to see my neurologist because he, I've said before, he is very much of the notion to stop tramadol. And I was kind of annoyed at him because in the last time I saw him, we had agreed I was going to try venlafaxine, and he wrote. He always writes a letter afterwards, a very detailed letter to my GP, and he sends a copy to me. And in that letter, he said, "If venlafaxine works, she needs to stop tramadol." And I thought, there's two reasons that annoyed me. Number one, I was actually on tramadol before I even saw the neurologist for joint pain. That's what I was initially given it for. And so that has nothing to do with him. You know, that's that's why I was on tramadol. I just noticed that it worked for my migraine and so therefore started using it for that with the agreement of the GP. Um, that was number one. Number two was that there's unlikely to be anything that cures me 100%. There's unlikely to be anything that gives me 30 days a month without a migraine. I'm likely to get one a week or something, it seems from, you know, user reviews that I've read which would be great. I, I can cope with that as long as I've got a rescue medication and the only rescue medication I have is tramadol. And so I'm going to say this to him when I see him in July, you know, that please be careful when you're writing to my GP in suggesting to cut tramadol because I use it for other things. And also it is a rescue medication for my migraines. Um, obviously, I will want to use it less if this gabapentin works and I will have more than the 15 days that I'm allowed to use tramadol to to live a life but even on the even on the days I use tramadol I can tell this is helping because I'm getting a full day it's not like it's not running out you know I'm not starting to feel awful in the evening I'm not sometimes tramadol didn't work as well whereas now when I'm even on the days I'm taking tramadol and gabapentin it's working you know so um overall I'm really really optimistic about this but I'm not at the stage where I'm like, yeah, yeah, I can do everything with my life. I can do a little bit more. I'm definitely doing a little bit more. I've, you know, filmed a little bit more. I've researched a little bit more. I've been to the shops a little bit more. I've done a little bit more housework. You know, I've just, I've definitely done a lot more, but it's going to take a while before it sort of levels out to, to a place where I can plan bigger things. Like I'd really like to like catch up with friends that I haven't seen for years maybe even think about a part-time job, um, doing more videos, you know, many, many things that I would like to do. Um, 
So yeah, I think that's all there is to update just now. Like I said, I'm waiting for a heart machine, a 24 hour heart machine. I've had one before. We'll see what that does about the palpitations. Gabapentin can cause atrial fibrillation. Um, I don't think it's that, but it, my machine is coming up with an, an irregular heartbeat. Um, so we'll see what the, the 24 hour machine says, see what the GP says and take it from there. Um, that's everything. Let me know if you've got any questions um, because I know a lot of people will be considering this drug and offered this drug, you know, um, and it's so ironic that this is the one that has possibly been the cure considering, or will possibly be the almost cure, you know, considering it's the one, one I didn't want to take. Um, so yeah, any comments, any questions, leave them below and I will speak to you again soon.